Welcome to Tech Up. I'm your host, Sarah Ingram, and this episode we're bringing you some really cool tech and science news, courtesy from our friends at Futurism. This week includes a new 3D printer that can do it faster, and let's be honest, cooler than all the rest, how to imprint new memories on adorable sleeping rodents, the fact that there are probably way more habitable planets than we think, and wearable nanotechnology that will probably make you immune to everything and also super invincible. New calculations show there could be a lot more planets in the Milky Way that have the capability of habitable life. Using NASA's Kepler satellite, Astronomers have found about 1,000 planets around stars in the Milky Way, as well as about 3,000 other potential planets. Planets that orbit very close around a star are too scorching hot to have liquid water and life, and planets that are too far from the star would be deep frozen. But the intermediate habitable zone, where there is a potential for liquid water and life, is not a fixed distance. The habitable zone for a planetary system will vary from star to star, depending on how big and bright it is. Move over, Mars! There might be some new planets vying for one-way trips in the future. DARPA has recently announced that the agency is close to a revolutionary breakthrough that can help mass outbreaks of disease, like Ebola, from happening. DARPA's system would work like this. Powerful antibodies would be isolated from survivors of a communicable disease, the plans for making those antibodies would be encoded in RNA or DNA, and then pumped into those who might come into contact with the disease. The cells in their bodies would suck in the genetic material and start cranking out these high-performing antibodies. A single human's immunological innovation could be spread to the rest of humanity, protecting us all. The process would be faster and cheaper than the traditional way of making vaccines, and would be widely applicable to the hot zone style emerging diseases. A new 3D printing technique pulls whole objects from liquid resin, stealing a page directly from the Terminator. The company Carbon 3D came out of two years of stealth mode research with a simultaneous TED Talk and science paper publication. Their new tech makes coveted 3D printers that are available now look like child's play. The team calls their new process Continuous Liquid Interface Production Technology, or CLIP, Clip places a pool of resin over a digital light projection system, and a special window between the resin and light allows both light and oxygen to travel through. It's 25 to 100 times faster than other methods without the risk of defects, and it also looks ridiculously cool while it's printing. Google has filed a patent for wearable nanotechnology that also might be capable of fighting cancer. The device can automatically modify or destroy one or more targets in the blood that have an adverse health effect by transmitting energy into subsurface vasculature proximate to the wearable device. The patent provides a considerable amount of details on how this wearable device could be used to monitor health and be used in medical studies in conjunction with many wearers of such devices, particularly being used to fight off targeted particles in a person's bloodstream. For example, the targets could include enzymes, hormones, proteins, cells, or other molecules. My next question would be, when can I get one, and how best to accessorize? Chemistry's own version of the 3D printer is a machine that can systematically synthesize thousands of different molecules from a handful of starting chemicals. The machine simplifies the complex process of synthesizing chemicals into a series of generalizable steps. Whether you're trying to form a ring of carbon atoms or strip away hydrogen atoms, each step requires a dose of starting chemicals, which are separated into distinct building blocks. To perform each step, the machine connects a building block and then induces a chemical reaction and washes away the reaction's byproducts, slowly building each molecule from the ground up. The building blocks are snapped together like Legos, allowing the chemicals to mix and a reaction to take place. Using this process, the machine can manufacture thousands of different chemicals in 14 distinct classes, including known medicines to several molecules used in LEDs and solar cells. The amount of time each molecule synthesis requires is a matter of hours, depending on how many steps are involved. Jupiter's largest moon has recently joined the club of solar system locales where liquid water flows beneath the surface. 
The ocean showed itself not with plumes or pools, but via subtle changes in its aurora, the moon's version of the northern lights. Jupiter's magnetic field should interfere, causing the moon's aurora to rock back and forth by about 6 degrees. However, observations showed that the aurora shifted by only about 2 degrees. The team deduced that an electrically conductive fluid beneath the surface, a saltwater ocean for example, would create a secondary magnetic field that counteracted Jupiter's interference. Other Jupiter and Saturn moons may also hold subsurface oceans, and researchers suspect there may be even more hiding out there. Water water everywhere, but not a drop to drink because it's in space. DNA nanobots will soon be tried as a treatment for a critically ill leukemia patient. The patient will receive an injection of DNA nanobots designed to interact with and destroy leukemia cells, while causing virtually zero collateral damage in healthy tissue. Contemporary cancer therapies involve invasive surgeries and blasts of drugs and can be as painful and damaging to the body as the disease itself. If this approach proves successful in humans, the team's work could signal a transformational movement in cancer treatment. This has the potential to be a huge medical breakthrough that could also help with other diseases by delivering medicine without some of the nasty side effects. Using electrodes to directly stimulate and record the activity of nerve cells, false memories have been implanted in the brains of sleeping mice. The new work shows for the first time that artificial memories can be implanted into the brains of sleeping animals. It also provides more details about how populations of nerve cells encode spatial memories, and about the important role that sleep plays in making such memories stronger. However, because this study involves a highly invasive procedure, it's unlikely that the method would ever be used in humans except under very extreme circumstances. By directly manipulating the brains of sleeping mice, researchers were able to trick them into thinking they received a reward at a specific place. Now there's no need for artificial memories here, because I'm sure you'll remember to stick around for our road trip to the Halifax SciTech Expo. Thanks again to the folks at Futurism for supplying us with this month's biggest news bits. Make sure you follow them on Twitter and Facebook to keep up with all the science and technology developments as they happen. That wraps up this episode of Tech Up. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Twitter, let us know what you think, and leave some comments. I'm Sarah Ingram, and we'll see you next time. Seems so bright to me. Tell me what is so wrong. Tell me what you've been waiting on. I've been catching you singing along with every word I sing. Oh, are you?